Okay, so I've sketched a quick one here. Excuse the mess, that's my reference photo. So, I mean, I can see there's a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, maybe not so much on the video, but I can definitely see it in the original picture. Um, I'm just going to try and capture it with those colors. Um, this is going to be tricky to hold this while painting. Okay, so I've just sketched it out here. Quite important on watercolor paper is to not erase because it compromises the integrity of the paper and then we've got big problems. Um, the water and the colors will react differently. So I've got some clean water. I'm just gonna add it on the actual image where I want to put it. I don't have any special brushes. I can't afford fancy brushes at this stage. So, but this is quite a nice shape. I bought it recently and I've really been enjoying it. But you can use whatever brush you feel comfortable with. Excuse all the noise in the background. It's Saturday morning, so the girls are watching a movie. Okay, so a good way to see if you've got the everything nice and wet is to look at it from the angle. You can see it's not puddling, but it's looking good. Okay, so this these are my paints. I'm going to mix a bit of um, amber, ach, oh, yes, amber, and here's my indigo, oh, sorry, videoing my pants, so, but I want it to be more indigo than amber, okay, I'm just gonna put that along the side, and if I, I feel that this is a bit too dry, I'm actually going to add a little bit more water, which I must do quite quickly with indigo because indigo is a staining color. So it doesn't, once it dries, you can hardly move it, which is a problem. And it will form a line very quickly. Okay, I'm just gonna wet this part a bit more. So it's good to get to know your colors, do some um, stain tests, learn to know what your colors, what your paints do and don't do. That for me was the great big learning journey. Okay, so I've got a bit of indigo there. Now I'm going to mix some, there's my, my amber. So it's a very wet mixture as you can see. And I just want to add it like here and there. It, you know that watercolor paint always dries much lighter than what you put it on. So don't have a fright. But we do want to keep it nice and soft. So what the indigo is going to do, it's just going to add a bit more um, like a feeling of, I don't know, of shadows or you know it just adds a bit more depth so it's a very nice cool color whereas the amber is quite warm it gives a really nice contrast okay so look there can you see there oh, let me just get my paintbrush on that side it's still too puddly to start doing blooms so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix that greenish color up by mixing um, I'm going to mix this which is my yellow ochre there we go, with a little bit of indigo just a touch 
I just want to look. Can you see that lovely, like, yummy greeny colour? I quite like that. And then I'm just going to add it here and there because you can actually see through the through the leaf quite a lot. You can see that, I don't know, in this picture there's quite a lot of green background. But it actually gives quite a nice feel that it's not like a standalone thing. It's not like on its own. It's actually part of something bigger. But also just like remember, just keep everything nice and watered down. Like my solution really, I mean if you see there as I'm placing it, it's really watered down. But I don't want it to be overpoweringly green. I'm actually going to go in with a little bit more umber, yeah. Just like the feel of that colour. It's going to give me a nice place to work on some blooms. So I'm thinking where I'm placing it like the little bit darker parts because I'm thinking ahead I'm having to think of I want to add some blooms and I do need color for the blooms to work but I don't want to you see those little white areas quite like that it's going to add a bit of interest in my opinion I'm, not, I'm talking as if I know what I'm talking about but I don't actually I just go on feeling I don't know much about art it's really hard for me to explain things because it's more like a part of me than what it is knowledge okay so now I'm gonna just wait just a little bit not much I'll show I'm gonna pause the video and then I'll show you when I come back what the water area what the surface looks like before you add blooms okay so I'm back I'm gonna show you what this surface area looks like. Let me just take it out into the sunlight. You can see, can you see that it's not entirely puddly? It's not dry. So I'm going to add some water onto it. It's important that my paper is completely flat. Nice clean water. And then I'm just going to put it above like that, that you can see what it does. I love blooms. And the more water you add to an area, but you've got to be, you've got to experiment because different paints also react differently to when you do this. And as I say, like even 30 seconds, waiting 30 seconds for a dry area can make a big difference. Can you see those color, those blooms that are forming there? Oh, I love it. Love, love, love it. I've been adding blooms to everything that I paint. It's just so interesting. And these um, leaves actually really lend themselves to having blooms on them. Um, okay, so you can see there's now quite a lot of puddling happening there. So let me just see what the edges look like. I think the edges are dry enough. I'm going to go in with some sepia now. Um, just plain, plain sepia, not too, like watercolors is never thickly applied. Um, so we just add a thin layer and then just have a look what it does. We just want it to bleed ever so slightly into the, into the painting without overpowering it too much I don't want it to go too deep so I don't like it's gone too deep there see it's gone too deep there I mean it could add, could be interesting when it dries because it's not going to dry quite so dark <laughs> 